Jason, after you were attacked at that karaoke bar in 2002, what was the first difference you noticed in what you were seeing? The smoothness of how things look when they move was gone. Have you ever drawn a flip book on pages where you draw a cartoon character and you change it and then you flip the pages and it looks like the cartoon character is moving? Mm -hmm. It's like that, but real time. And when you flip the pages, you can tell it's jumping from one spot to the next. Right. And our brains normally smooth out that jumpiness so it appears to be continuous, even though it's not continuous. It's discrete, individual frames. And that's the way the universe works, too. When you flip the pages of a flip book, it's like being aware of the picture frames that we're seeing. And our brain smooths them out for us so they don't look jittery. So if you see someone riding a bicycle, you would see rectangular frames moving like video or film frames? Yes, yes. My brain isn't smoothing them out. We are jumping through space-time. So there's like a million, billion, billion picture frames per second in the real universe. That's like the maximum number of pictures that can be taken is Planck time. And that's that quantum leap that you always hear people talk about. And when this first happened back in 2002 and you began to see this whole world in a new way, did the fractal pattern hold in your head until you sat down and started trying to draw it? Yeah, I can't not see it. There's no way for it to ever go away. I mean, sometimes it's almost a pain because when I want to relax, I'm still constantly seeing that picture frame pulsing even when I'm trying to go to sleep. Sometimes it can be tough to, to deal with. Which leads to your extraordinary illustration of the hand. What does it mean to you? It means that everything comes in quanta. Everything comes in discrete little chunks. Nothing is perfectly smooth. And I know I go back to that a lot, but it's such a huge concept. And everything in the universe, everything in physics, everything in calculus is based on this concept of nothing is perfectly smooth. And you can't count infinity, but you can count like the velocity that you approach infinity. And so keeping this concept of slicing like pixels tinier and tinier and tinier, eventually it applies to everything. When you stare at your illustration of the quantum hand, what do you feel? That everything is just a wave and that your observation creates your reality. Doesn't this support even more the idea that we are in some kind of very advanced simulated universe? It definitely, to me, seems like it works like a simulated universe, absolutely. And who would put this kind of a laboratory experiment into existence and from which dimension? Yes. I want to know how it all got here. Is there a purpose? And if I'm understanding correctly, all mass, as physicist Bohm said, is frozen light. And that would mean no matter what we are, humans, dragons, spiders, anything, that we are all entangled photons, meaning we are all one, even if we know violence and war and you were beat up in that karaoke bar. Yes. Yes, we're all entangled, we're all connected, and we're all light. We're all photonic beings, a universe of light. Last year in April 2016, there was a scientific panel discussion in New York City moderated by astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson about the question, is this a computer simulation universe? It definitely seems to operate exactly like the holographic universe principle. The holographic universe you can overlay a grid of Planck length pixels like on the room that you're in and what is on each one of those little pixels describes the reality. Well, Goot at Harvard has had the hypothesis that there are an infinite number of universes. We are in one. Is it possible that all the other universes, if they exist, have different physics? Yes. When I think about how the universe and it the multiverse works every time I come down to thinking and believing, even though I can't prove it. I am a firm believer in the multiverse theory because it always comes down to fractals. Do you think in your mind now, after being struck by genius, that there is a fractal structure to the universe? And what I'm thinking of is 
myself and many others were introduced for the first time to fractals through the crop formations going back to the 1980s and the early 1990s, there were two fundamental fractals that were put down in cereal crops that made everybody stand back and wonder. One was the Mandelbrot that mm -hmm. is defined on the edges by Julia sets. Right. Is there something fundamental about the Mandelbrot and the Julia sets as a structure that our universe may mimic? Absolutely. The definition of a fractal is it's a shape that when you decompose it into pieces, the pieces are the same as the whole. And so the universe, by being this giant 3D grid structure, breaks down into tiny little smaller 3D grid structures, which breaks into smaller grids, which breaks into smaller grids. So the universe itself is a perfect fractal. You take it apart into pieces, the pieces are the same as the whole. And the Mandelbrot set is an equation that is being put onto a computer screen grid. The way that I view everything is just basically as waves. And the universe itself is like a wave that is rippling outward, like a fractal. I'm looking at your beautiful sketch. Do you call it the quantum hand? What that is, if you put a little circle in the center of that hand and you divide that hand into segments. Okay, but is there a relationship in your illustration to what appears to look like light coming from the center of the hand to photons and to the concept that all matter is frozen light and that we are, in essence, photons. Yes, I believe everything is light. And everything is moving through space-time exactly at the speed of light. So light is absolutely paramount to everything. And is that why some people's hands can heal? The more I get into it, the more I have a hard time discounting anything because the universe is so much weirder than science fiction. I know that people who are positive heal faster. So our minds can do amazing things and our bodies can do amazing things. When you think about the quantum weirdness of the universe, that you can be in an infinite number of places at once, that there's a multiverse, that we can be inside of a large computer program, to think that somebody could somehow do something like that isn't so strange anymore. And we know that space is geometry, and that is numbers. And we have also found that nothingness, the vacuum of space, vibrates with quantum fluctuations from uncertainty. So nothing vibrates. And so now we have a vibrating grid structure of nothingness that always is, that will always vibrate from uncertainty, and that is infinitely large and infinitely small. I mean, you pretty much got the ingredients you need for all math, which is basically just a grid structure and something that allows things to at least appear to move across the grid. We all came out of that Big Bang together. Every planet, every star, this whole universe, we were all squished right next to each other, <laughs> you know, at the Big Bang. Our atoms were more than hugging each other, all of us. And at that point, we were all quantumly entangled. Why is there so much death and violence and abuse? Yeah, you know, I, I wonder, but I always think of that as just kind of being like all things that can happen do. You know, in quantum mechanics, everything that can happen does happen. And it doesn't seem like the universe cares so much about fairness as it does just that all things that can happen do. Can you take all of this and move the track to the question of the soul yes. that animates the biological containers? I think of the soul as being like every tiny quantum movement and measurement of me from the moment I'm born till the moment I die, that is me and my soul. Matter is energy, E equals MC squared. So matter literally is energy, and matter can become energy, and energy can become matter. They can switch back and forth forever, but they're never destroyed. That means the matter that is me has always been and always will be. It's been light. It's been in everything. You know, a lot of people talk about what happens after you die. But when you're dead, your energy is not in a form that can observe time. Time is meaningless. So we know that this universe is 13.8 billion years old. Do you remember waiting to be born? All the matter that is you existed, you were in dinosaurs, you were in stars. But to you, it was instantaneous. You've always existed. When you die, you can't observe time. 
So time is meaningless to you. So you don't notice that time go by, just like you don't notice the time waiting to be born. So to me, when you die, the next thing you know, if there's an infinite number of big bangs, dying is being born. The next thing you would know is you're just hopping into existence again in the next universe where it's identical to this one, but I'm left-handed. Every single possibility happens eventually in an infinite amount of time. So the soul could be some sort of substance designed and made specifically to take all of the frequencies of a conscious life into it for recycling. Yeah, and the universe just automatically does that. 